Hi everyone, welcome to ATP Live. Um, thank you so much for joining us on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, so um, I don't know whether you can see. Okay, yeah, you're back. Yeah, because you were frozen before. So yeah, you can go ahead and welcome people. But let me just share the videos, but you can go ahead with the welcome. On. Hello, everyone. Good evening, because Nigeria. Um, I hope you're having a good week so far. You're welcome to another Monday episode of ATP Live. And of course, um, I'm here with our CEO, Dr. Wemisola Boyedi. You know the drill bring on your questions and you know drop them in the comment section and you have our ceo give you um first hand answers today um from wherever you're joining us from good evening again don't forget you can share this invite your friends to join us all right. I hope those on Instagram, even though you cannot see my second uh, presenter, because I don't have that luxury of setting up that tech, the one I did last week, uh, but uh, you can hear her. Don't worry, you will see me and we will also answer your questions as well. So try and post your questions as soon as possible so the, the earlier we see them, uh, the better. So I think I've shared to all our groups now. Um, let me just confirm every group already has a copy. Then we can start taking the questions. So if you have your question, if you are in our it's Ask the Tradition Facebook group, you can drop your questions under the main video. Or if you're on the page, you can, on the video page, you can drop it as well. On Instagram, you can drop it. On YouTube, you can drop it. But if you are, if you are on, um, if you're in any other group like ATP Family or ATP Still a Mom, you will have to navigate your way to the video for me to see your questions. So I hope that is helpful for those who are on that platform. You have to click on the video and then drop your questions on the comments. I hope you can hear me those on Instagram and I hope those on Facebook can hear us as well. Okay. Uh, so I don't think we have any question. Yet. Okay, we have one question. It's like my moderator is frozen now. <laughs> okay. Um, Angela, can you hear me? Angela, are you with us? Okay, it's like Angela is frozen a bit are you back now? blessing yeah i'm back <laughs> you were frozen thank you for all those who have joined us so far on instagram and on facebook i can see blessing sunday 975 she says she can hear us ugonna is there go in your lantern thank you too for joining us i think we already have questions popping in on facebook yeah, Dr. so let's start. let's start. Can you approve them or do you want me to touch approve them? Yeah. Hello. Hello, I can hear you. You seem like your internet is a bit frozen today. You are in and out. Can you hear me now? Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. You can go ahead and can you see the question? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can see it. So this is from a Facebook user saying, what's the best multivitamin for a seven-month-old baby? Mm, okay, so there's really nothing like a best multivitamin. Multivitamin is multivitamin. So most of them are basically similar. Uh, what you need to do is to check what they contain. But really what we recommend, we don't routinely recommend all these multivitamins for babies and um, seven month old and all that. You are free to, the most important thing you should focus on is to make sure you give your baby a good complementary feeding that contains all the food classes including fruits and vegetables so most of the vitamins your baby will get them from the fruits and from the vegetables and you keep breastfeeding as well 
So there's really no reason for you to give any on any any multivitamin. But if you want to give, you can buy anyone available in the market. Anyone that is well, the age is fine. Okay, yeah. I think this yeah. is simple. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Facebook user, you have your answer there. Um, this is from Rebecca Adewusi. Good evening, Ma. Thanks for the good work you're doing. You're welcome, Rebecca. Please, my three months old son have what your boss call Ila. What can I do, please? Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for that question. So, Ila is a very common word in Yoruba language and basically they tend to use it to refer to some rashes and um, they tend to refer to almost most rashes as Ela or some of those other uh, apart from a few other ones so what that means is that we cannot rely on you just send your, your baby has rashes so there are different type of rashes and the rashes also have different causes so the treatment of a rash is depend on the cause of that rash the type and the cause of the rash so without seeing a rash we cannot tell you the cause and we cannot tell you the treatment so the best option when your children have rashes is to show a doctor at least an health professional who can tell you oh this is a bacteria kind of rash or this is a fungus or some rashes are due to reaction maybe to the products you are using on the skin or some uh, allergic reaction so we need to know what is the cause of the rash to be able to tell you the treatment for the rash what most people do is to just think they can just pick any cream or powder and start using it sometimes you actually worsen the rash and at the end of the day we're not even sure what we are now treating anymore because you have added to the initial one by the treatment you give so i always advise parents not to do try and error when it comes to rashes try and say doctor generally for newborn baby to prevent rashes uh, it's really the common kind of rashes that are due to either infection or due to allergies. Hand washing is very important. Wash your hands. We should not just be touching baby anyhow. You are changing diaper. You have not washed your hands. You just touch the baby again, carry baby, carry breast. And you know, so those are the things baby get rashes from. Make sure you wash your hands. Anybody who is going to touch the baby, carry the baby, must wash their hands or at least use the hand sanitizer to avoid buying all these uh, very heavily chemical lies uh, products you know those products yeah. are nice most of them are full of chemicals so go for what we call natural products or hypoallergenic so usually things like your vaseline your olive oil your uh, uh, coconut oil uh, your shea butter those are things that are usually just natural they don't have chemicals added to them yet so they are good and there is really no reason for you to be putting powder on baby skin because what you are doing is you are drying up the skin and that can also cause rashes. So if you keep to using hypoallergenic product, including even the soap, try and go for baby, the soap made for babies, or at least those, like even black soap, things that are natural, or natural products as well for the skin, uh, making sure you don't overcover the baby, especially when the weather is hot, especially in Nigeria, especially those of us who live in very hot weather, you don't need to put cap, put socks, put gloves, wrap up the baby in, and baby is sweating. Those are things that lead to eat rashes, and then you now touch them with uh, maybe on wash and then it becomes bacteria infection. So just take this common precaution to prevent rashes, but once your baby already have the rash, then you need to see um, any of my colleagues to be able to know what type and what treatment. Don't self-medicate when it comes to uh, rashes. It's very, very important. Okay, I think... Did I miss Thank you. Uh, Rebecca, I hope you heard that. Mm -hmm. It's better for a doctor to see the rash and then they can now recommend a solution based on what they are saying. Yeah. Okay, so Sobie is saying... Good evening, Ma. My baby will be 11 months in a few days' time. Has two lower teeth. She's been eating complementary foods, but yeah. lately she refused them unless it's in puree form. Could it be teething? Mm, well, there are, there are many possibilities in a child who is refusing to eat. Number one, it could be the child is bored. Child can be bored. Some of you, you give the same kind of food all the time, no variety, the same pap or the same. I don't know what you're giving. So I would say try variety, try something new. Um, number one. Also, a child with refusing food may actually be me, like you said, maybe if it's cheating, you will see other signs like the child may be drooling a bed, the child may be rubbing the gum, you know, and that usually will last for one or two days and 
that would be all. Or it could also be a sign that the child is about to fall ill because sometimes uh, food, um, poor appetites, you know, could be a first sign of a child who is about who is ill or who is incubating something. So it's difficult to say in your own case. But since your child is still taking the puris, give the puris, but then gradually also introduce back and try new food and if you need if you notice any other thing else again then you may want to see your doctors all right all right so be i hope you heard that um moving on this is from rita Ilega. good evening dear doctor what could be the cause of recurrent boils on a baby of two years Okay, thank you. That's a very good question because we get that question a lot about boys. You know, children keep having boys, boys, boys. So let's start by saying boys are bacterial uh, infection. They are like infection around the skin um, that's uh, due to bacteria. The commonest of them is what we call the staph aureus. It's not all the one you hear in the radio. They think people are having genital infections, have staph aureus. That's pure nonsense. Staph is just a, is one of those bacteria and it can cause boils. So there are a few other ones that can cause. So you see something like, uh, like a little swelling with pores inside. I really need to explain what boils are because sometimes I've seen people saying something is a boy when it's not a boy. So if there's no pores inside, if it's not swollen or looking red, you know, like that, it is not. So that's number one. Then if it is when boils happen, usually you need to treat it with antibiotics, especially if it is big. You know, if it's a small one and you clean it or you apply something that can ripen the boil, like your chair butter, any of those things, and it's the pulse, you need to let the pulse out, that will be whole. But if it is really big and it's or it's slightly affecting multiple parts of the body, then the child will need antibiotics to deal with the underlying uh, organism or germ, which is the bacteria that is causing the boil itself. So after you've done that, but if your child keeps having boy, the question is why? Why is this child having this recurrent boy? Number one, hygiene. Like I said, hand washing is important. I think most of us are now very familiar with hand washing. Thank God to thank God for COVID. COVID has taught us a lot about hygiene. These are things we should be doing regularly, but I think COVID now made us realize the fact that we need to do it. So hand washing is very key and even not for you even for the children especially when you say two year old they're also touching different things and they will scratch their body so then they have like a little um uh like a little break in their skin and then they rub it with dirty hands or jams and the boys will happen so you need to help them to wash their hands often you know general hygiene and all that very important too you need to if a child is having recurring but with, and you are making sure you are doing hygiene and everything, then we need to check, does this child have what we call immune uh, difficulties? Like something is affecting the child's immune system or the child is not able to fight infections. Because all of us are exposed to germs most of the time, but we're not always breaking down with diseases of boys and all that because we have what we call immune system. The white blood cells, they fight those germs for us. So people that have what we call low immunity for for whatever reason it could be either some the way they were born or it could be due to maybe like things like maybe they are malnourished malnutrition or children with some conditions like diabetes or kidney problems like nephrotic syndrome and all that. if they have all those kind of conditions they may have low immunity and then they tend to have recurrent points even children who are going to have like cancer like leukemia and all those kind of things one of the signs that they may start coming down with infections frequently so if you have those kind of um uh if your boy if you are making sure that you're doing the hygiene and also you are treating the if for example if they give you antibiotics you treat it properly like if they say use it for five days you don't use it for two days and stop because the boilers bust and that's then no you must complete your antibiotics if they say use it for 10 days you must complete for 10 days even though the boil has gone you must finish your dose of the antibiotics so if you are doing all that and your babies keep having recurrent boys then you need to see one of my colleagues so that we can check to make sure the child doesn't have any of those uh, immune problems that may be responsible for the recurrent boys. It's not very, they are not very common, the immune uh, deficiency and all that. Most of the time is due to uh, hygiene, cleanliness, and washing, all those basic things that things that we can quickly fix. Actually, when children are now becoming more adventurous, when they are touching things here and there, 
get them into the habit of always helping them to wash their hands until they can do it on their own. So I hope that is helpful. Okay, I think I should just quickly go to it. Yes, there's a question on Instagram. Yes, let me go to Instagram and quickly answer the Instagram people. Um, blessing, I think is the first question is from Blessing. Yes, thank you, Blessing. Um, Blessing is saying, my three weeks old has no poopoo for four days. Please, I want to know if it is normal. What can I do? She's on exclusive breastfeeding. Thank you. So babies on exclusive breastfeeding, they don't pass tools every day. They may not pass tool for even up to two weeks. So it's not something to worry about. So you just keep breath. As long as your baby is okay, your baby is not vomiting, your baby is not having swollen uh, abdomen, your baby is not, you know, ill. If baby is otherwise well playing, eating, sucking, there's nothing to worry about. It's just one of those things that you see in babies who are on exclusive breastfeeding. This is one of the reasons why I do the first time first time mom course. I think I may reintroduce it again so that you know, first time mothers, you can be coach on what to expect, what is normal, what is not normal, when to worry, when not to worry, because I know you tend to worry a lot, which is fine, but that's why we are here to make sure that you don't uh, worry. I guess that's the only question on Instagram. Um, I hope I didn't miss out anybody's questions. Uh, yeah, it's just question. that one on Instagram for now. Yeah. So please, if you have any yeah. questions so on Instagram, go back please, to Facebook. let's go back to Facebook, okay? Okay, I think we've, yeah. answered this. we've answered this one. Yes, this one. We've answered yeah. this one, yes. Please, from a Facebook user, please, can I go for six weeks immunization a day before the actual day? Okay, it's fine. If you want to go a day before the actual day, it's no problem. But I, I, I always just recommend that it's better you go on that day or after as much as possible. But I guess one day will not make that much of a difference, so it's okay. Yeah. Mm. Hey, doctor. This is from Victory Ebidami. She's saying, I try to practice the back to sleep, but my son doesn't sleep for long on his back, maximum mm. one hour, and sometimes cry out of his sleep. Mm -hmm. He's seven weeks old. Mm -hmm. So that, that is not unusual at this age for babies to cry in their sleep and all that. So what you need to do is to put the baby back in this on the on the back. I mean, put the baby back in the position to sleep and try and just kind of um, maybe rock them a bit and all that kind of help them to settle. That is usually un not unusual. No, but what most of you start them on the wrong way by putting them to sleep on their tummy and all that is wrong. Baby should sleep on their back. There's a reason why babies need to sleep on their back. There's what we call sudden infant death syndrome. This sudden infant death syndrome is when babies just die suddenly and, you know, you, baby, you I'm sure most of you have heard or you've read you know, babies who are born and they sleep, and then the next day, baby's dead, and we can't know why the baby died. So it's what we call sudden infant death syndrome. And one of the things that have been found as a cause for it, or associated with it, is the putting the baby to sleep on their tummy. So I'm not going to go into all the explanations for why and all that, but scientifically, it's been recommended now that baby should sleep on the back. We're talking about your baby living here. We're not talking about your baby being comfortable. We're talking about your baby being alive. So I know that it's not so common, but for a mother who suffer that loss, it is an unprecedented loss. So I don't think you want us to be going to research. These are research done by pediatricians all over the world. These are evidence-based. So put the baby back on the, on the back, after a while, just like any new habit, baby will get used to it. If you keep doing it, if you start the baby on the back to sleep, they, they, that's all they know. They will keep on sleeping. Your baby, there are many reasons why your baby could be waking up from sleep. Is it baby well fed? Is it baby wet? Is the baby um uh having colic and all that so the fact that a baby wake up is not because your baby is sleeping on the back there are many reasons why many babies wake up at this time that is actually the time most of them are awake as you know so because in the first few months of life babies like to sleep more during the day and be awake more during at night so there's nothing to that's not an issue and that does not mean you should not put the baby on the tummy no you can only put your baby on the tummy when baby is awake and you are monitoring them, and usually not more than for a few minutes. When your baby is sleeping at night, or your baby is sleeping 
you should always put them on the back. That's the best thing. So you, your baby does not get what we call sudden infant death syndrome. While we're still on that topic, please don't put too many clothes or cushions around babies. The baby don't need pillows to sleep. They don't need all these... Um, when you put your bed sheets, make sure it is this the fitted one that it is completely covered on the bed. There's no loose sheeting around. If you are going to cover them with um, blankets, please use neat, knitted materials that have holes. They are, they, because babies can move those things and cover their nose with it. But if it's knitted with holes, they can breathe through it. But if you put any other fancy stuff and they cover their nose, they can strangulate themselves. So that's why we don't want too many loose materials around the baby that is the honest truth so keep your baby safe that first one year back to sleep i hope so just keep doing it after a while baby get used to it it's an happy thing yeah okay let's go on okay yeah moving on from blessing a day my baby was big at birth weight five kg so i was advised by the nickel nurse nurse to always top up with formula, but I want to do EBF, so I am confused on what to. Please, the nickel, the nickel, the nickel nurse should not have allowed you to be topping up with formula. That is wrong information. So, usually, when your baby, if your baby was big enough to be in the nickel, please take your advice from the pediatrician who is managing your baby, so that they can everything we do must have an explanation. Why was your baby needed? To, why why is your baby needing to be top up with formula? Is it that you are not breastfeeding enough, or is it that you are not lactating enough? That's a different thing, you know. So you need to, you didn't tell us that you are not lactating well, and then we need to top up. If you are lactating well, please give your baby breast milk. Even people that have twins, we ask them to breastfeed. So having one baby, I don't know, unless you are not lactating and they are worried about your baby having hypoglycemia like low blood sugar and all that. Because usually for a baby who is five kilo, we're going to admit your baby, we're going to check for blood sugar because we're worried that you, whether you have diabetes and your baby is an, you know, infant of a diabetes mother will be prone to having what we call hypoglycemia. So, and at that point we want to feed your baby. So if you are not lactating well, we're going to give your baby formula. That's not an issue. But if you are lactating well, then give your baby breast milk. There's no need to chop up. There's no need to give extra food. The most important thing is to feed your baby. Babies can know when they are full. So let them suck. And when, when they stop, that's it. And then maybe every another three hours, baby is away, then you feed again. So that's it. Unless you're not lactating well, then you may need to clarify that for me. But I don't see any reason why you need to top up. So breastfeed your baby exclusively, and that'll be fine. All right. Okay, let's go on. Yes, thank you for that. So moving on from Facebook user, my baby's BCG site is not completely healed yet. It's not, is it not taking too long? It's not paining or itching him. He turned four months old today. His birth weight was 3.81 kg and weight at 14 weeks was 7.8 kg. He is on exclusive breastfeeding. It's not taking too long. Just leave it alone. There's no, there's no, there's no, don't just ignore it. Don't even worry. I don't even look at it. Just leave it alone. It will heal by itself. So just leave it alone. It's possible to happen that way. Your baby is just four months. Usually we don't even check BCG counts in six weeks. So some babies also have what we call excessive response to the BCG immunization. And they can either have an abscess or um, like, like a wound, like a, a bigger swelling and all that, but it will resolve on its own. If it's really that bad, like a very big abscess, sometimes we can give some, we will treat it as if we are treating tuberculosis, we give anti-CB drugs, but we reserve that for very severe cases. But most of them resolve on their own and ill and will form the BCG scar. Since it's not disturbing the baby, just leave it alone and keep breastfeeding exclusively. All right, so don't worry about it, so it's nothing to worry. All right, thank you, doctor. Um, this person is asking, is MMR vaccine so important? If yes, Go on. why has government hospitals not made it take this vaccine? Yeah, make it available. 
Okay, thank you. That's a very important question you've asked. So I will tell you that, uh, let me start by telling you that vaccines, all vaccines are important. What are vaccines? Vaccines are products or modified products of a, you know, to protect against a particular infection or disease. So when we say MMR, MMR is actually three vaccines in one. It has measles, mumps, and rubella. So those are what those are the three things in the MMR vaccine. The Nigerian government gives you mixes vaccine. Now, vaccines are expensive. That's what many people don't realize. The fact that you get the vaccine for free does not mean it is cheap. Vaccines are expensive. Somebody is paying the bill for every vaccine you get. So you said the Nigerian government has not given MMR. It's because the go it is expensive. So governments have to prioritize and say. What are the diseases that are really bad that can kill our children that we, in our country is a major issue and we can pay for that? Let's focus on that first. So government usually gradually add vaccines. And there was a time that the uh, pneumococcal vaccine was not part of what the Nigerian government was giving, but now it is part. There was a time that you, you, uh, we're, we're not even giving immunofluorescence influenza, we're only giving DPT, but now we give Penta. So we are now have hepatitis B. I, I can remember when I, it was when I was an adult that I took my own hepatitis B vaccine because when my mom took, gave me immunization, there was no hepatitis B. So that is what it means. So, but gradually the government works and says, okay, now let's have this, let's have that. So the government of every country decides what vaccines they want to give for free. So as far as Nigeria government is concerned, measles is the most important when it comes to those um, vaccines. So they give you mixes for free and they give you both mixes, um, uh, they give you mixes one and mixes two. So mumps and rubella, yes, there are also conditions that can happen and they can, but they are not as life-threatening and they're not going to likely kill anyone. So that is why. <laughs> but if you can take the vaccine, if you can pay for it, why not pay for it? But if you don't have the money, then take the one that is available. So you get measles, which is one of the MMR, but the the government for now has not added MMR to our list of vaccines. So but the vaccines are available, but you have to pay for it. So if you have the money, pay for it. If you don't want to pay for it, take the one that the government gives you. So that's just what I'll say. What 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 is the consequence of you not taking the MMR? Is the fact that your baby can have mumps, your baby can have rubella. Rubella is almost like measles, but it is a milder form of measles. Mumps, that's when you see their cheeks swelling up like that. So yeah so right now the nigerian government doesn't have money for mmr but they have money for measles vaccine so take that one i hope that's helpful yeah but all vaccines are necessary all vaccines are important so yeah let me just quickly take instagram because if not i'll forget them completely so I all right ibuko Sonya is asking um what do we do about swollen breasts in babies babies 10 days old thank you that's a very good question uh let me tell you why babies have swollen breasts because that will help you to understand so the same hormone that you have as a mother that you know when you're pregnant your breast gets bigger in preparation for breastfeeding so there's an it's, it's due to influence of some hormones we have different hormones prolactin and all that they are responsible for you know uh, even the estrogen, even the progesterone, all of them, they are responsible for making your breasts bigger and for you to, to prepare you for, for breastfeeding. However, that same hormone can go through the blood and enter the baby's blood. And when it enters the baby's blood, it can make the baby's blood, uh, breast also to swell up. So it is just the effect of the hormone. The good news is that once your baby has been cut from you, the placenta has been separated, the hormones will eventually... You know clear off from the baby system and the breast will go down so it is a it's normal it's just as if your baby is also want to breastfeed sometimes for those of you who press it you will see that it can bring up even milk and some people worry about that so and what most people do is to go keep pressing it because they think when they press it the swelling is going to go down that is the worst thing ever to do 
please do not press the newborn's breast. I've explained to you why the baby's breast is swollen. It's just the effect of the maternal hormones, which will wear off and the breast will go back to normal. Now, what people do is that when you press it, you are going to make it get infected. And that will now cause what we call mastitis. Or sometimes you can become even a full abscess, like infection, and you have pus inside. And then that becomes another issue. We have to take baby to the hospital, give antibiotics, cut it open, and bring out the pulse. Whereas all you need to do is to just leave the breast alone. Don't press, don't massage, don't do anything to it. Leave the baby alone. Babies don't really need any form of massaging of any part of their body, their breast, their navel, all those things people do. Absolutely not necessary and very dangerous in addition so please just leave it alone and it will resolve it may take a few months even some babies can take up to a year but it will go down and it, cap it happens to both boys and girls so it's not a matter of it's a girl it's a boy there's nothing to worry about please don't put anything don't press anything just leave it alone and it will be okay i hope that helps uh ibukun all right um yes Okay, then somebody is saying, is the IPV vaccine necessary at nine months? I was told it's a new vaccine added. Thank you so much for that question. The IPV, the full meaning is inactivated polio vaccine. Now, what that means is that uh, we have two types of polio vaccine. We have been taking polio vaccines all along, but we were giving what we call the life polio vaccine, which is the oral one, which is what is recommended where polio is endemic and nigeria used to have a lot of polio cases but when you are in a country where polio has been eradicated or is almost eradicated then you stop giving the life vaccine the, the challenge with the life vaccine that is we are giving the polio is, but we're giving it in a altered form but some children may still have the polio from even the vaccine, but it's very rare, but it can happen. So when your baby is no longer have, when the polio cases are so reduced in the country, then you switch over to the inactivated, which is the injection type of the polio vaccine. So right now, Nigeria government is switching gradually to the injection type of polio vaccine because we were doing the oral polio all of you are the one that will come to your house and be dropping the baby's mouth that is the oral polio but luckily for us now we have been we have made a lot of progress and i think we've not had uh i think for one year or two years now we've not had any case of white polio virus so we're really making progress and hopefully we'll soon be certified polio free as well so in preparation for that is the fact that we need to switch from the oral polio to the in, in injection polio. So currently, the government is still giving both the oral and they've now introduced injection. They first started with the IPV1, but they've now started with the IPV2. We're still going to go to IPV3. And once we go to IPV, then we will stop the oral polio. So take it. Is there nothing wrong? It's to make sure you protect your baby from uh, poliomyelitis. Poliomyelitis is that disease that makes babies leg to um and they, they and that they won't be able to walk they may be able to they may lose the ability to walk and their leg will be dry you know will, will, will dry up and you know i'm sure you've seen some children like that so we want to avoid that so that's why you need to give your baby the polio vaccine how that's helpful okay and um, final question from instagram for now so bless is saying how do i know my baby is getting enough milk good question because she's talked like for 30 minutes as a go so i wonder whether she gets enough thank you that's one of the commonest questions we do answer how do you know your baby is getting enough breast milk one um the most objective evidence of your baby getting enough breast milk is that your baby will be gaining weight that's the most objective evidence so a baby who is gaining weight is getting enough breast milk so if you go to immunization on six weeks your baby was weighing four kilos you will go on 10 weeks your baby is weighing five kilos that's your baby's guess there's no way your baby is not getting enough breast milk because your baby will only gain weights if they are getting enough breast milk but as at the time you're feeding most babies also know how to when they know when they're full so when you when you breastfeed 
your baby will suck until they are satisfied and they will stop. So usually that would take between 5, 10, 20 minutes, depending on the age of the baby. So smaller babies, newborn babies are not as effective suckers because they are still learning to suck. And the mother too is also learning to breastfeed. So they tend to breastfeed more frequently. But the once the babies are bigger, three, four, five months old, they are more effective sucker so they grab the breast by themselves and they empty it so they empty the whole thing so you know so if you're lactating well and your baby is well attached to the breast and your baby is sucking long enough for you to feel you as a mother you will know you know when you are when you're about to feed feed your baby you see your breast is full it's even leaking out but when you finish feeding you feel that empty lens like the breast has empty then you know your baby has taken enough and you often produce more than your baby will need. That is the truth. So you don't need to worry. Now, I need to emphasize the fact that the fact your baby cries or the fact that your baby stay long on the breast does not necessarily mean the baby has not got enough breast milk, which is what normally frustrates uh, newborn, new moms, first-time moms, as I always call them. Babies suck on the breast for many reasons. You think your baby is only sucking the breast because they are hungry and they want food. That's one of the reasons. But there are many other reasons why babies suck on the breast. One, babies suck on the breast for comfort. Sucking itself is a pleasurable thing. Babies just like to suck. That's why you see some babies, they would have sucked, they would have filled up. You will see their tummy is also big and everything. And they will slip off but immediately you remove the breast they will quickly look back for it so at that point they are not sucking because they are hungry they are just sucking for the pleasure of sucking and that's why babies suck their hands and that's why babies suck on things on pacifiers and baby just like sucking sucking is something nice to do it's pleasurable so that is one so babies suck because they want to feel you they want to you know bond with their mother so sucking is a way of getting close to you so they know that when they are sucking that is when they are with you but once they are not sucking you go and put them down the bed so they learned early that okay if i want to feed my mom's warmth and all that the security and all that that's why they keep sucking so it is also for that and sometimes baby also suck you know to comfort themselves like if baby is in pain or discomfort and all that they just suck on it just so it's, it's sometimes we pediatricians, when we want to do a procedure on a baby, so if you want to take blood from a baby, for example, so instead of giving them anesthesia and all those things, we just give them something to suck on. That is the anesthesia we give them. They just suck on maybe you just put like glucose in a in a in a gauze or something and put it on the mouth. As they are sucking on it, you do the procedure, they won't feel any pain. So it is part of the way we give them uh relief. So baby suffer with every so the fact that a baby keeps sucking, sucking, sucking does not necessarily mean that the baby is hungry. His baby is sucking for all the reasons. So you don't need to worry. As long as your baby is gaining weight, your baby's tummy is full, you yourself you can feel your breast empty, you are lactating well your baby definitely will get enough breast milk. So for those of you who need to know more about breastfeeding, you can go to our Facebook group. We have lots of um, videos, what we call breastfeeding videos, that give detailed explanation. It are short videos of five to seven minutes that you can watch how to attach your baby to the breast, how to know your baby is getting enough breast milk, how to increase your breast milk supply, all those things about breastfeeding. I always recommend that you go through all those videos. You will love it and you will learn a lot from it. Okay, so let's go back to Facebook. I'll come back to Instagram later. Back to Facebook. All right, so um, Bakare is asking, please, doctor, my baby of four years is having discharge in her eyes, and it's all also red. I noticed hmm. it yesterday. What can I use for her, ma? Okay, you really need to take the baby to the hospital. You need they need to check the baby's eyes. We don't just prescribe medications just because you say that I need to know what is wrong with the eyes. Is it an infection? Is it an allergy? You know, so that would determine the treatment. And would it, what would normally say for now is make sure you wash your hands, you clean the discharge with clean water and cloths, and discard it and wash your hands. See a doctor, let them prescribe appropriate medication most times it will be an eye drop but they need to know what type the baby needs depending on the course how that is helpful mm. all right um 
So we move on to Sylvia Godwin Okodua. Sylvia? Okay, okay so no, Facebook no. user is saying, in a, no, no, you're right, leave it. I noticed blood in my baby's pool. She's three weeks old. She's taking breast milk and SMA gold. Is the SMA gold too sweet? Well, you can taste the SMA gold for yourself. I don't know about that. Um, but we normally recommend you exclusive breastfeed your babies. Now, are you really sure what you saw is blood? If you are really sure what you saw is blood in the stool of your three weeks old, you need to go see a pediatrician immediately. You didn't tell me whether your baby was a preterm baby or whether your baby is a full term baby because it also has implications. Okay, so there are conditions that worries us. For example, we have what we call ne necrotized enterocolitis. It's a condition common in preterm babies who are fed formula. And so one of the signs we see is that they have blood in the stool. There are many reasons why there can be blood in the stools. Baby can also suck in blood. So, but your baby is three weeks old. So I don't expect your baby, for example, if you have a wound around your breast, for example, that is leaking blood and your baby suck on it. Baby can pass that blood in the stool as well. So we will, so that's why we need to check you as well. So to make sure there's no, it's not like baby sucking blood, you know, through the breast milk and all that. Or we also need to check that baby doesn't have that very uh, serious condition called ne necrotized enterocolitis. We also need to be sure what you saw is actually blood. <laughs> that's, that's the first thing we need to start. So they will test the stool for blood. If this is confirmed that it's blood, we need to know where's the blood coming from. Is the baby bleeding? For example, if your baby also did not take vitamin K at birth, they could also pass blood in the stool. So there are many reasons why baby could have blood in their stool. So we it may not even have to do with SME or no SME, but we need to know why. So what I would do is that if you're as you are watching me now, you just carry your bag and go to the hospital. So you see a pediatrician, so that they, please go to see a pediatrician. Don't just see any doctor because some people will not. They will just maybe something like this entry and no, it's not this entry. In this age, it is not this entry. We need to know. I've given you like three or four courses. Is that the baby is sucking in blood? If there's a wound in your breast or something, or it could be. Nitrocotized enterocolitis, or it could be vitamin K deficiency, maybe can bleed as well. So, we really need to know which one is the cause of the bleeding in your baby so that we can now address it. But it's a serious issue if your baby has blood in the stool. And if you are lactating well, there's really no reason for you to do formula, just exclusively breastfeed your baby to avoid that. I hope that's helpful. I don't know what happened to my moderator. She has disappeared. Hopefully, she will reappear. Okay, Sylvia is saying, uh, what could make a, a, year, a, a child of a year, seven months, anterior fontanel not so close? Uh, one year, seven months, anterior fontanel is not something to worry about. Most anterior fontanel will close around 18 to 24 months. So I will not worry. Just wait until the baby is two years old, and then you can see the pediatrician, see if it has not closed. Unless there are other issues with the baby. If there are no other, if your baby has other issues like development and not working, not running, and all those kind of things, then you can see uh, a pediatrician now. But if your baby is otherwise well, it's just the front end that is not closed. Wait until it's two years old. The baby is two years old, then you can see um, the pediatrician. Okay, welcome back, um, Angela. You're welcome back. Thank you, doctor. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, go on. Please read this one. Okay, so from Lord Wilson, Iode, Iodo Faith. Well done, doctor. My 10 month old is light skinned, but I noticed her knees getting dark when she started crawling. Any cause for alarm, please? I don't think there's any cause for alarm. Usually, most people's knees are usually darker than the rest of their bodies. So, I, unless I don't know what you meant by light skinned and all that, so it depends. So, but if if you if it's just because you'll be said crawling and only the knees are darker, maybe it's slightly darker, not like the knee is completely black and the rest of the body is completely light skinned, then that may be something that's going on. So, but if it's just the skin, I mean the knees, then please. No need to worry, but if you are worried, then you need to see a pediatrician. And please make sure you are not using any of those contraband on your view skin. Most of you that use all these skin, from back, 
you are adding it to your baby's cream or because you say you want your baby to be fair. Please, you are doing harm to your babies. You are damaging their skin. You are, you are letting them get steroids into their system, which is very dangerous. So please don't use anything to keep your baby light. Black is beautiful. If your baby is black, let your baby be black. If your baby is light skin, let your baby be light skin. You don't need to maintain any skin for a light skin baby. Baby who is light skin will always be light skin. No matter, just use natural products on their skin. Please don't mix any chemicals because mothers are fond of doing all that these days. So I really need to stand. I'm not saying this is what is happening to my to the person who is asking questions. This is just a general warning, though. So please don't mix any products into your baby's skin yeah, cream. And all those products I mentioned are not baby's body cream. They are drugs. They are medication that we use to treat skin conditions, skin diseases. So they are not something you use like every day you are putting skin in or contact A or AB, ABF or whatever, all those things. Please stop if you are doing it. Just go and throw it away and just use normal products, prefer preferably something natural. Your Vaseline, your shea butter, your coconut oil, fine. Don't cause damage to your baby's skin. All right, so let's move on. In essence, you're saying just moisturize the skin and nothing yes, else is needed. With natural products, yes, yes. With natural products, all right. Okay, so going on, good evening, doctor. Please, what can I do to make my toddler walk straight? I noticed he walks with his feet slightly apart and sideways. He is two years old and his walking does not affect his agility in any way. So I'm, I'm trying to imagine walking feet apart and side sideway. What do you mean by sideway? Is the feet of the baby turned in any, you know, is the feet turned, I don't know, in like, uh, you know, turned in a, in an abnormal way or what? Because that sideway, I don't understand. I understand the feet apart. But really, I, I really don't think there's anything to worry about. If your baby's feet is not facing the front, like it is bent, or something like that. Maybe you may have what we call club feet or things like that. Then you may need to see us a doctor so that we check that. So just be on the safe side. But if it's just walking with feet apart, there's nothing wrong with that. Some children when they start when they start to walk, I didn't know when your baby started walking, they didn't tell us it's they may walk, you know, a little bit not steadily until after a while, then they balance well. But I worried about the side way you are talking about because I'm not really sure I quite understand that. And that's if there's a problem with the, the positioning of the feet itself. Even when your baby is standing straight and you put the baby's feet together, it's not looking, it's not standing straight. It's just that there's a cough or a bend or anything, mm -hmm. then that one we need to say either a pediatrician or an orthopedic doctor. So, because if it's something like that, we can correct it on time. All right. Okay, let's move on. You can give All right. Yeah. <laughs> We're moving on now to Simon and Chineyem. Good evening, ma'am. My baby is seven months, but has no teeth yet. Mm. Always running fever. He, we went to the hospital. He's not having malaria, and they gave me brust and N. Any day I skip it, it starts all it will start again. What do I do? Number one, you're not supposed to be giving your baby bruised and hand. Bruised and is like ibuprofen. You're not supposed to be giving your baby ibuprofen every day. So I don't know how long you've been using it. If you have used it for more than two days and your baby is still having fever, please stop. You need to go back to the hospital to know why your baby is having fever. Your seven-month-old not having teeth is not a problem. Some babies may not have teeth until they are one year old. But, but your baby should not always be having fever. When you say always, I don't like blanket statement i'd like you to tell me your seven months old that you'll be having fever for seven months or uh, having fever for one month that is more uh easier for me to process than just saying always so i'm not sure whether this always is from age from date from birth to now or is it last one week i know mothers are always worried and they're always just but for a doctor it doesn't really help us when you say things like that it's better to tell us your baby has had fever for five days seven days, one month, two, two months, and hey, I can relate with that. Because your baby should not always be having fever. It is not normal. 
And did you use a thermometer to check the temperature? Because some of you say, my bee's having fever, you put your hand, it's warm. But when we put the thermometer, it is normal. And that's why I always tell mothers that your hand is not a thermometer. There's a reason why they didn't rely on our hands. There's a reason why they created that instrument called a thermometer. Because our hands can be deceptive. If, you if your hand is cold and you touch somebody else, you know, the person will feel cold to you, they, you know, and the person is not cold. It is you that your hand is cold the same way. So, um, so it's better to get a digital thermometer. I always say that everybody should have a digital thermometer in your house. It's very cheap, less than a thousand naira in Nigeria. Buy it when your baby is hot. Put the digital thermometer in the mouth or in the armpit, and then it will it will beep after like two minutes, and you can read it. Anything between 36.5 to 37.5 is normal. Anything higher than 37.5 is fever. So you can give paracetamol. I actually don't like giving ibuprofen to babies um, this age. I prefer you give paracetamol. There is a reason why, because ibuprofen is what we call non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs. It can make people to have ulcer. If you don't eat, you have to give it with food. So it's very important that you know. And sometimes some doctors don't remember to tell you that. So, but paracetamol, you can give it without food. That's fine. So, if the fever persists, then you need to see a doctor. The fact that you've been to the hospital and they didn't find malaria in the test, just tell me there's no reason. Malaria is not the only reason why children have fever. There are like 1,001 reasons why children could have fever. But in Nigeria, we always think everything is malaria or typhoid. No. So, there are other things. Does baby have hair infection? Does baby have throat infection? Does baby have urinary tract infection? They even check the urine. So, these are things that people don't even look out for. So, we need to know why is this baby having fever rather than giving the ibuprofen or brastamol all the time. The most important question to be answered is why is this baby having fever? It is not normal for a child to be having fever. So if your baby is having fever, there's something causing it. We need to know why. And that is what we need to address, not to just be giving the paracetamol or the ibuprofen. So I really want you to give me additional information. How long are you going to be having fever? Which hospital do you go to? Because sometimes you have to go to the right place to get the right um, um, treatment. So I hope you will tell us more, Simon. Okay, let's go on. All right, Simon. If you're there, we'll wait for um follow-up response from you. Okay, um my you six know. year old boy com yeah. My six year old boy complains of pain during urination. Yeah, so I guess you are telling us what to do because you didn't ask the question. Always ask the question. If you don't ask the question, I'll just ask you. <laughs> you have just given me information and I don't know what to do with that information because you have not told me anything else. So if baby is having pain when passing urine, it could be due to urinary tract infection. Sometimes boys feel erection when passing urine. And because they lack, they don't know the words to use for it. So they will say they're having pain. So you need to check. You need to check first. But if baby is always having pain when passing urine, like they are crying and they can't even pass urine straight, or they are going to pass urine very frequently, like maybe they have passed during like five, ten times in within one hour. That is most likely an infection, urinary tract infection. So what you need to do is to take baby to the hospital. They need to take the urine. They need to send it to the lab. They need to culture it to know what is causing this infection. Though while we're waiting for the culture, we may start you on some antibiotics. And then when the results come now, we may need to now give appropriate antibiotics. So that's what you need to do. And it is, it is important. Because urinary tract infection can, if you don't treat it on time, it can ascend and go to the kidney and we start having things like kidney failure and all that. We don't want that. So I always say when your baby has things like that, but check first that your baby is not just having erection and thinking it's having pain. It's very important. All right. Um, we're moving on to Esther Anthony. Well done, ma'am. My baby of a year plus is always having heat rashes. He sweats a lot, though, because he's active. Please, what do I use on him? What you need to use on him is not as important as that. So how to prevent him from having more heat rashes. So for me, your baby having heat rashes means the baby is, uh, like you said, very active, sweaty. So you need to keep the baby cool. So give the baby a bath. 
use your fan, keep your room well ventilated. That's all you need to do. And so that will reduce the chances of the baby having heat rashes. So if the baby is having heat rash, there are heat rashes powder that you can use temporarily. But the most important thing is to make sure you address why the baby is having heat rashes. So try and keep the baby cool, give a bath, you know, maybe, and when the weather is so don't wear them tea clothes and everything. You can just wear a light cutting um, singlet or something and all that when they are playing, you know, very minimal clothing when the child is running about and playing. And then in the night when it is cooler, you can wear something, you know. But what I find that the most reason why children sweat a lot and have it rashes in Nigeria is because mothers we, we overdress our babies, we overwrap them because we believe that if they are exposed to to breeze, they will have pneumonia. I don't know where that comes from. Pneumonia is not caused by breeze, it's not caused by hair, it's not caused by cold, cold environment, it's caused by germs. So that is not um so make sure you you I always say mothers on ETP dress or maybe according to the weather with swords, lighter clothing. If it is cold, thicker clothing. That's the best way to go about it. Okay, so I think our time is running up. Let me just answer the remaining two questions on it on Instagram, then we'll finish. Um then we'll finish on it on Facebook. Please once it's seven All right. questions again. We just take the one that's already come in. All right, okay. Uh Modok my following is say eight months old baby suddenly stop taking breast milk and does is it does not accept formula because you say does accept formula either, but I guess you want to say it does not accept formula either. He accepts other series, always wants to eat what I eat, and now 8.535. I'm worried about his weight. This weight is okay. Eight kilos in an eight month old is perfectly okay. Now I'm not worried about the weight at all. Uh, I'm more worried about the milk, but we need to be taking milk. And uh, an eight month old baby seems to be taking breast milk. And what normally happens, let me tell you what, what normally causes this is because when mothers start complementary feeding, you consciously or unconsciously reduce your breastfeeding. That is what normally causes this. So you tend to give them more of the complementary feeding because you think it's solid food and you want them to gain weight faster with it. No, no. They need to keep breastfeeding as much as they were breastfeeding before. So when you start complementary feeding, don't reduce your breastfeeding. Keep breastfeeding the same way you are breastfeeding, but you are now hiding the complement. Maybe don't need more than two complementary feeds a day. I, I mean, an eight months or maybe three in a day. The majority of their food is going to be breast milk and milk. So, but mothers then now start doing the complementary feeding eight times a day. And then when the baby is going to suck the breast, there's really no need. Then baby will just be like, okay. This sucking is even more hard work than the than the other food. After all, you feed the baby with the other food with a spoon. So that is why. So mothers, some mothers because they go to work and they are, you know, out all day. And so the baby tends to adjust, like, okay, I don't see it, I don't bother them. Sometimes some of them, when you now come, they they're no longer interested. So I always tell mothers, don't jump on people jump on community feeding as if thank God. I've escaped this breastfeeding. No, you still need to breastfeed your baby because your baby need breastfeeding for so many reasons. One, apart from the food, which you are not giving complimentary, the 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 the, the milk, I mean the breast milk protects your baby against infections and all that. And baby still need milk, they need calcium, they need all those things for their bones to develop and all that. So your baby must take milk until the age of five. So your baby cannot stop taking milk at all at eight months old. What you need to do, there are ways to give milk. You don't always have to give milk as liquid drink. In other words, drinking milk. No, you don't always have to give it as milk. You can put milk in your cooking. So you even your baby is taking cereal, you can add milk to the cereal. Your baby wants to take smoothies like some fruits. You can, you know, you when you are making your cereal, you blend, you, you already blend the milk into it, or like you're cooking your oats, you already cook it with milk, you use the milk to cook the oats. So the baby is not going to see the milk on the top like a drink, it's going to be eating the milk. You're making your pancake, you use milk to make pancakes. So there are many ways to see add milk to your food without you know, without necessarily making the baby to drink the milk. And some babies like to lick the milk as well. So it's okay, it's fine. As long as they get the milk into their body. So that's what you need to do. Because your baby still need milk. So don't stop milk until 
at least we always say on to five years when you're meant to be taking milk all right thank you blessing uh how do i know if my baby is deficient of a vitamin why should your baby deficient of a vitamin so if your baby is eating well taking fruit taking veggies and all that they will not be deficient in vitamins vitamin d they get from the sunlight um so people babies are deficient of vitamins if they are not eating what we call adequate complementary feeding you are not giving food from different food classes so if you are not doing that then maybe will be deficient then you give multivitamins so there are different vitamins have different deficiencies so vitamin for example your baby may have what we call night blindness they may have skin rashes and all that vitamin b they have what we call um uh, there's, there's, that there are conditions they may have swollen abdomen they may have so many other things or they you know fully acid, for example their blood level may be low vitamin c they can have scurvy they'll bleed from the gums and all that vitamin d they could have rickets so each vitamin has its own deficiency states so I don't want to go into teaching uh, um, biology, but I'm sure you remember from your secondary school biology. So each vitamin deficiency has its own deficient uh, manifestation. But the most important thing is for you to make sure your baby don't even have vitamin deficiency. If they eat different kind of food, because there's no food that is completely, uh, even your rice has vitamin b inside so every food has a little bit of the vitamins inside but so that is why when you mix different food you will likely get all the various vitamins especially fruits and vegetables you your people will get it and that's what we really would prefer rather than you're looking for vitamin deficiency um yes so uh, blessings asking that is it proper to feed a baby with all manner of food and adult eat from six months Yes, a baby can eat every food that an adult eats, but the, they're not going to eat it in the same texture. So a baby cannot eat a bar. It's not going to eat apple at six months. So you are going to start with semi-solids. So you can start with pap, you can start with porridge. Like you can mash your rice. You can make your rice as porridge. You can make your yam as porridge and all those kind of things. So what you need to do is for blessing and anybody who needs information about complementary feeding because... You really need to understand complementary feeding. How do we do it? You need to understand what quantity to give, how often to give it, what texture you start with before you go. So you start with, so maybe I've been on liquid milk. So you're just going to make it thicker. So it's going to become porridge, then mashed, then before you go on to solid. So there's a way to, you know, progress about it. So we also have lots of videos on complementary feeding. So the best option is for you to go to our Facebook uh, group look for our guide section and then you can go through the um guide too on complimentary reading. lovely videos and all those videos are done using local african food and so you will really love it and you will understand complimentary reading properly i guess that is um uh that is it finally uh he, she fell eager. So my doctor pull after every feed. Is it normal? Yes, it is normal. It is what we call a, a gastrocolic reflex. So it's it's not something just it's just some people are able to suppress it. Some children cannot suppress it. So they when you when they eat food, the tummy get distended. It also send a kind of information down the intestine and they feel like passing. So what they are passing is not the food they are just eating, it's the one they've eaten before that has been digested and that has been stored in the rectum. So, so don't get it confused because some of you think it's maybe your food, maybe you're eating now, it's, maybe it's passing out as well, no. So I hope that is helpful. All right, so we our time is up. So we'll go back to Facebook and answer the question that has already come in. Please don't answer any questions, ask new questions again. You can post it on our Facebook group, but for the purpose of ATP Live, our time is up, but we'll answer all the questions that have come in already and then we can start all right so this is from rita and um is there any recommended quantity of milk to use in babies seven months in baby's pap so she's referring to a seven month old baby this is to avoid giving too much milk if there is anything like that all right thank you so much for your question so you want for, for a seven month old, if you are using milk, you have to use age appropriate formula. I hope you know that. So it's the same measure. So they said one scoop to 30 mils of, of water. That is what you use to make the formula. So the same thing when you're doing the, 
um the pap so you 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 use the same average so if you are doing like 30 minutes of pap then one scoop of milk is fine and you don't need to mix it first to make it watery no you just put it because the pap has to be thick that's another thing mothers do don't give complimentary feeding via bottles never complimentary feeding must be given with cup and a spoon and when you put your pap the porridge on the spoon it must not pour that is how, that's the way I always tell mother to know whether you are using the right consistency or not. If you put, if you use the spoon to carry the pap and you turn it, it should not drop. If it is dropping, it's watery. And that is not what we want. So it should be thick enough that even if you put it up, it will not drop. It will just, oh, it will stay on the spoon. That is the consistency of the pap and the milk. You can just mix it with it. So you don't need to worry so much about giving too much milk. If you are still breastfeeding your baby, a little bit of milk in your pap is fine. Don't worry about measurement. Most modern is that for your seven month old, we expect that you are breastfeeding. If you are still breastfeeding, your baby will get enough milk from breast milk. Complimentary feeding is also not formula feeding because some mothers say when you when you start complimentary feeding, it means you should start giving. Uh, formula and they don't want to give formula maybe three four five times a day no you don't even need to give formula so you don't even need to put milk at all you can actually express your breast milk and put it in the pap you can use your milk your breast milk as a as a milk into the pap if you want to give it some taste so but you can just breastfeed your baby as well and complementary feeding is also not pap feeding pap is not the only porridge so your baby, it can be rice it can be yam it can be Amala, it can be anything, but it has to be soft. It has to be something porridge like nuts, like your eba or pande diam, you no, know, that kind of a thing. That will be later, or maybe around age of one year, two years. So, but from age of six months, it has to be soft. The quantity is surely not much. So, please, if you if you know the principles and the, you understand complementary feeding well, you will you will not struggle with feeding your baby because you will have the right expectation. And we do the right thing. So I hope uh, that is helpful. Okay, let's move on. All right. Yeah, from Chemishola Babs. Good evening, Ma. Please, can I administer ibuprofen three times daily for 10 months old, weighing 11 kg because he's having high temperature since last Thursday, while cefuroxime and ACT suspension with ibuprofen, ibuprofen were prescribed. I took him back and... The cefuroxime was changed to cefixime today, but still persists. Or what else can I do, Ma? Okay, so first, you can give ibuprofen every six hours. The same thing with paracetamol is you can even give it four times a day. So three times is fine, but you can also do it four times a day. That's good. But I'm more curious as to why you'll be having fever from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. That's five days. Um, anyway, your doctors have changed you to cephic time, so you can watch for another two days and see whether the change of antibiotics will make a difference. But if it doesn't, please take the baby back to the hospital. I didn't, you didn't tell us exactly how they arrive at the diagnosis of the treatment because I didn't hear whether they, I know because of time, of course, you're also writing quick and your main question is about whether you can give your ibuprofen, so that's fine. But your baby is having fever and after two days of your new antibiotics and there's no improvement, you need to go back. Please go back to the hospital with a pediatrician so that they can do other tests and they may want to admit your baby. So if they say admission, don't 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 resist. Just go with the doctors. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Is there any drugs for colic? My baby will be two weeks on Wednesday. So how do you know your baby has colic? It's very unlikely to be colic at two weeks. So for for tell me how you know your baby has colic, then I will answer your question. There are drugs for colic. Well, there's actually only one drug anyway, but I am not really even sure your baby has colic. So because it sounds like too heavy, but tell me how do you know your baby has colic? Then we will answer that. All right, moving on to patient Thomas. Um, my three-month-old baby had ear problem, and I took um, him or her to the hospital, and the doctor prescribed Flumox and automed eardrop, which I administered to her for seven days. And after that, the ear started bringing out water and went back for follow-up. He now prescribed Amoxilav. What is the cause of the water after the antibiotic? 
What do we want to cause of the water? The water coming out of your baby's ear is a sign of your baby having ear infection. Was it pus that was coming before? Because you just say ear problem. You didn't. You are not very specific about the ear problem. So what was the ear problem before? So what was coming? Was something coming out of the ears of the baby? How do you know the baby has ear problem? Uh, I'm not really very keen on giving ear drops to three months old automate. I'm not sure which doctor you saw. I'm, I'm very, very particular about where you take your babies, especially new, uh, young babies. So anyway, basically, I think the doctors are treating your baby for ear infection, and that's why they're giving the antibiotics. And um, yeah, what you need to do is to keep the baby's ear dry. Don't allow water to enter the hairs of the baby. And it's very easy to do it. Don't pour water on the head of babies. Mothers do that a lot. It's wrong. You don't just pour water on their head. You wash their hair the same way you wash your hair as a mother when you go to the salon. So you wash the baby's hair gently, just put a little bit of the soap or your rub it gently, rinse it and dry it up immediately. Then take your, your face towel or whatever, put it in a soap or water, and just wipe the face. Wipe the face, wipe the neck. Don't be pouring water on the face as if uh, they want to swim. No, no, don't do that. That is where the water enters their hair. It is important that the baby's hair is kept dry. And please don't put uh, cotton board in their hairs. Don't do all those things. So if you do all those things, you, your baby's hair will be fine. Because... Then when you're breastfeeding, if you are not very comfortable knowing how to breastfeed lying down, the better you sit up so that, uh, because I don't know whether this water is even water from your bath or water from breast milk that enters the hair. Anything can enter the air to come out. And what is the color? Is it like pulse? Or no? So you, you really need, your information is not very, very specific enough for me to really, you know, because you're asking me what's the cause of the water. I'm assuming, I'm just assuming because your doctors are giving antibiotics that maybe it's an infection, but usually infection it is pus that will come out. If it is water, the first thing I would think is that you pour water in the baby's hair and the water has to come out. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. So you, you want to be more specific and you, you really need to tell us more information about the what air problem. So I really want to know whether maybe really need all these antibiotics or not. I don't know. Let me just leave it like that. Okay. okay. Um, yeah. Um, we're moving on. Please, doctor, my baby of seven weeks usually shakes while sleeping. I don't know the exact English to use, but like he vibrates when sleeping. Is it normal? Babies can can have a little bit of shaking of the, you know, like that. They just shake their hands like that when they're sleeping or their legs will shake a little bit. It's normal. We call it uh, benign myoclonus of in you know, of newborn babies. It's normal, but it is only during sleep. Only during sleep. If your baby is shaking or vibrating when awake, you will need to be sure your baby is not having convulsions, and that means you have to take baby to us to or you do, what I might tell my parents do a recording of the video of that shaking, show us, and then we can we will be able to tell you whether it's normal or not. So I hope that's helpful. But majority of the time, if it's only during sleep, it's just, it's just nothing to worry about, really. That's it. Um, Please, Ma, my baby is 11 weeks. Will it disturb her if I take lemon? Well, I don't know why you want to take lemon, but um, I guess you want to lose weight. So we usually say try and leave all those weight loss stuff until after, until later on. Because uh, some babies, who, you know, because a little bit of it can pass the breast milk. I did eat lemon. I don't think it should really affect the baby, but some babies could become more fussy and all that, like ginger and all those things. So you may want to just leave it until your baby is okay. I mean, the breastfeeding is well established, then you can... Okay, Mary Chi. Okay, um, Mary you. Chi, DK. Okay, go on. Sorry, I was... <laughs> I'm writing through. It's like you're lagging behind. I don't know. Yeah. Okay, done. Okay, I guess you, you sometimes you disappear. Princess, welcome. up. You are late, but you can watch the video again. Can we move on, ma'am? Yes, please. Let's move on. 
Hello. Hello. Let's move on. Are you hear me? Uh, I think your internet is breaking. You are muted, um, Angela. Angela. Okay. Okay, I guess the uh, uh, internet was breaking. Okay, Facebook says, say, my baby is 17 months old and cries out in pain with her heart beating fast as if she's losing strength. We have been to the hospital with scan, x-ray of her stomach and chest, but nothing was seen. What could be wrong? I don't know. 17 months old cries out in pain with her heart beating fast. That worries me a lot. So I want you to see a pediatrician, preferably in a teaching hospital. You need to see a, a pediatrician in a teaching hospital, not just any doctor and all that. It's very, can very you hear me? Oh, yes, we can hear you now. But I just finished answering this question. So let's move on to the next person. Angela, go on. You are muted. You are muted. You are right. Princess is saying, my baby is 19 months old and I still, I am still breastfeeding him. I have not menstruated yet. Is this normal? Yeah, it is normal. You may not, you may not see your first period until you stop breastfeeding and that's perfectly normal. Um, we're moving on. My baby is 4 kg from Beth. She's five months now. She's on exclusive breastfeeding. Her weight is 9.0 kg now. People are complaining that her weight is too much. Please, Ma, is her weight normal? Yeah, she's on the big side. She's on the big side. She, but she started big as well, so um, which is not unexpected. But don't worry yourself. Um, Usually, sometimes I, I don't know whether your doctors check you at birth, check the baby to make sure there are no conditions because there are some medical conditions that could make a baby very big or gain weight very fast. But because your baby was four kilos, you'll be just doubling the birth weight, so it's fine. I, I won't worry so much as long as your baby is otherwise healthy. But your baby definitely is weight is on the what we call the eye side of the normal, even right from the four kilos at birth was big. That's it. Yeah. All right. Um, please, doctor, I would like to know if a breastfeeding mom can also take corona. I think she meant vaccination, can take Vaccine, for corona yeah. vaccination. I was wondering what is vaccination. Okay. Yes, you can. You can take uh, corona, um, the, the COVID-19 vaccine, if that's what you meant. You can take it. We, we don't have enough evidence, but so far, people have said there's no reason to worry. So even pregnant mothers, if you are significantly at risk of COVID-19, it's better you take the vaccine, yeah. All right, we're moving on now. Um, can allergy make a child of four years cough whenever the weather is cold in the morning? If he wakes up anytime, maybe from 8 to 9 a.m., no cough throughout the night, only when the weather is a bit cold. It will look like the nose is blocked, but do not have strong allergy. Well, it's possible. Yeah, it's possible. It could be allergic to cold. Yeah, it's possible. But I, I don't know about, because you said nose is blocked and cough. It's like you are missing up two, there are two different things. So, um, well, but it's possible. It's a possibility for me. Usually most of the people that have allergic conditions actually cough at night not in the morning but then you said the nose is blocked which is a possibility so maybe the coughing was just because the child is trying to clear the throat or the hairway rather than you know coughing the usual which one with the one we see with um asthma for example yeah all right solomon wa for it is god only god that will repay you abundantly thank you too yeah. solomon thank you for yeah. blessing atp yeah moving on to rafiat um good evening ma'am just curious is cerebral palsy the same as down syndrome and as autism no no they are not there are three different conditions they are not the same and i know people make this mistake a lot because people people see children with special needs and they just label them please if your child has any special needs 
don't assume the diagnosis. You need to see a pediatrician. You need to see a developmental pediatrician for a proper assessment. Sometimes they have some features that they share. For example, all of them may not talk on time. Everybody may not talk on time because the child with autism, the child with cerebral palsy, the child with uh, Down syndrome, but that also necessarily means the same. So for a child with cerebral palsy, the main thing is that they struggle with their movement, mobility. So that's the one thing that will always. Down syndrome is a content, is a chromosomal problem. They have it. They, the way they look, they look uh, uh, different. You know, but we there are still features that doctor will see. We know that this is Down syndrome, but we have to confirm it by genetic test. Whereas autism, they struggle more with social interaction, so they are not the same. And I understand why it can be confusing, but don't I always tell parents when your child, if you think your child has any developmental issues, see the pediatrician. Don't make a diagnosis by yourself, and you don't label any child based on what you see. You are not a doctor to do that. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you, um, Ife De Niro for that, for enjoying the teaching. Rema Awoso says, my son will be five years old by October 20. He weighs 22 kg. He's not chubby, just normal, but he's quite bigger than his age. Please, is the weight okay? The weight is okay. I think he should be weighing around 18 kilos thereabouts but it's not bad 23 is not too bad don't worry um amira chris is asking please is the ipv still necessary at 20 months mm, no no i mean you really should have taken all the opv I, I i don't really think you really need to go back for the ipv i don't know what the government is recommending whether they want to do for everybody again because even the ipv2 is just being introduced gradually so it's not for i think they are giving children who are now still less than a year i don't you because once you're about 15 months you already pass nigeria immunization status anyway so i don't think so mm. no so don't worry about ipv you've gotten the opv it's still the same uh vaccine in different form yeah Okay, next question. Um, what's the effect of giving oraxin OTC as and it's like to and it's like to a baby for weight gain? Is it appropriate and does it pose any health risk to a child? Number one, oraxin is not an OTC, it is not an over-the-counter medication. It's not something you should give to your child. It's cip it's cipreptadine. It's actually a medication meant for something else, um, not for weight gain in children, but because one of the side effects is that people who take the medication can gain weight. So people use it not by recommendation for weight gain. It is wrong. Don't give. If you go to our Facebook group, I've actually printed out all the side effects of it and it's a very terrible side effect so you don't want to give your give your child food if your child is not eating well or gaining weight it's the food that baby needs to eat not drugs so don't give it to children and i know some people market it as weight gain product but not recommended by pediatrician and it's very wrong and can be it's very dangerous once it can be it's very dangerous for children yeah <laughs> Okay, so we are moving on to Rafiat a king dinner. My baby of four months old can roll over from front to back on the right side, but he's not yet rolling to the left side. Hope it's normal, ma'am. Hope it's not too fast because he has not started sitting with support. It's not too fast. It's not. I don't know why mothers or mothers worry whether the child development is too fast again. <laughs> It's not something to worry about. So it's okay. That's fine. That's perfectly normal. Everything is your range. So when we say a child should do something at a particular age, it is just the average. Some children will do it earlier. Some children will do it later. It doesn't really mean everybody, there's anything wrong with those who do it earlier or those who do it slightly later. It is only when they don't do it after a certain, what we call like our own cutoff age, that's when we worry about it because that is telling us there may be a problem. So I don't think you need to worry. Okay, because of our timing, actually, let me just do a quick run through them and just 
and just answer in one, one minute. So <laughs> that will we'll be fast. All right. Tell me that. Okay. Mind. That's fine, ma'am. Go okay, ahead. So yeah. Somebody is asking about breastfeeding and COVID 19 vaccine. We've answered that you can take the COVID 19. You've vaccine. answered this before. Uh, yeah. She sleeps quite a lot without sleeping. In the morning, she will sleep. Yeah, your baby is perfectly a normal baby. Uh, okay, she, so don't worry. So that is saying diarrhea during to eruption. What is the management? Sink is not working for the baby. Okay, sink is not the treatment for diarrhea. ORS is not the, the, the goal of giving ORS and oral sink is not to treat the diarrhea. It is not to stop the diarrhea. That's the mistake people are always making. So we're not giving you that medication because once you take it, then the diarrhea will stop. That is not, that is not the reason why we're giving you the medication. Okay. So the diarrhea will stop on its own. It surely is due to viruses. There's no drug for viruses. It will stop on its own. What we're trying to do is to make sure your child doesn't develop a complication of the diarrhea. The what kills a baby who has diarrhea is not the stool. What kills a baby that has diarrhea is dehydration. It is loss of water. So what you need to do is to forget about the diarrhea and keep rehydrating the child. Keep giving the ORS. And what else the zinc does? The zinc is to heal the intestinal layer. So I don't want to go into all those medical jargons, but what normally happens in diarrhea is that the virus or whatever, the toxins attach itself to the lining of the intestine. And then what the body does is to remove both the lining and the virus and let it go out into the stool. And because the lining has been removed, that lining is what absorbs water, that lining is what absorbs things. So there's little or no absorption, so everything is coming out. That's why your baby is having diarrhea most of the time. Or sometimes we also have some form of diarrhea where the virus makes the body, to, the intestine to produce a lot more water than normal and also come out, so the stool is watery. So when we give you medication, when we give you ORS and ORS for diarrhea, we are not trying to stop the diarrhea. Mm -mm. We don't even want to stop the diarrhea. We actually want it to come out because most of the coming out of the diarrhea is the virus itself coming out with those diarrhea so we actually want it to come out we don't want it to stay okay so what we are trying to do with ohrs is to rehydrate the child as long as you are replacing the water and the electrolyte that the child is losing the child is not going to die nothing is going to happen to the child so that is why you need to keep giving the ohrs Keep giving the ORS. Don't worry about this stool. Don't give diastop. Don't give tetracycline. Don't give any drug to stop the diarrhea stool. You are actually doing more harm than good. The diarrhea will stop max 10 days, max 14 days. Most of them will stop. The most important thing is that while we're waiting for diarrhea to stop by itself, you are giving the water that the child is losing. You are giving the electrolyte that the child is losing. You, you are helping the sink of the intestine to heal faster, to produce a new lining so that then when the new lining is formed, it will reabsorb water and there will be less diarrhea. So there's nothing like the sink is not working. The sink is working, but you are, it's not doing what you were assuming is going to do. It's not supposed to stop the diarrhea. That's not the idea. The idea is to replace what has been lost. And it, this thing will prevent future episodes of diarrhea and future episodes of pneumonia. So there's a reason why we're giving it. We're not giving it to stop the diarrhea. So I hope Souders to get that very clear. I went overboard on that, but I really want mothers to understand that. Uh, Aro Woshek, where your 11 month old to sit down. There's nothing wrong with your baby. Your baby is fine. No need to worry. Uh, what do you have to say about massaging a baby? Blah, blah, blah. Please don't do it. I see a lot of, you know, all of you have seen that video of those mother almost breaking the babies, you know. Just all this baby massage, it is completely, absolutely unnecessary and dangerous. Please don't do it. Just leave the baby alone. They don't need to shake the baby. When you shake the baby you can cause bleeding in a baby's brain and baby can become have a disability for life seriously you should not shake babies their the blood vessels in their brain is very soft and fragile when you shake baby it can it can tear and then they bleed in the brain so just leave this baby alone. just wash them 
breastfeed them, keep them warm. Babies are so easy to care for. You don't need to do all those things. You people give yourself more problems by doing what you don't need to do. Just bath a baby. If you don't even need to bath them, just clean their skin, you know. Breastfeed them. Keep them warm. Don't let them have their uh, jams. Wash your hands around and all that. You know, keep the environment clean. That's all you need to do. Your baby will be fine. So please don't do all these things. Don't clean the baby's ears. Baby's ears don't need no cleaning. You wash the external hair. You can you can clean it with the with your face towel and all that. You don't need to put cotton ball. You don't need to clean anything. The wax is actually cleaning out the hair. That is what the wax does. And when it is finished, it will it will drip out. So you can clean it as it's coming out. But you don't need to. When you push something, when you put your cotton ball, you're actually pushing the wax further down and you can puncture the hair drum, which is the membrane between the, you know, the outer hair and the inner hair. So just leave the baby's hair alone. Don't clean the vagina too. Just leave it alone. Just clean the vulva on the outside. So there are so many things we do. I think I'm just going to come one day and talk about all these things all over again, all the myths, and let's just trash all of them and put them away. There's really no need for you to do all that. All right. Okay, finally, you don't never need to use a powder on a baby. There's really no, absolutely no need to use a powder on the baby. Um, um, ask about two, okay. Okay, uh, so this is a question of the person who say, you asked about your baby's feet, that there's something abnormal about the feet. Uh, yeah, if the feet are apart, that is fine. But you say it was bending somehow. That's why we asked this question. So that's okay. Um, another person is saying maybe having pain, uh, the pers pain is strong. So most likely it's having an eruption, er erection. So that is not the kind of pain. But most times children don't have the word for erection. So they will say pain. But if you are sure that is it, then there's no need to worry. Uh, baby scratch her eyes when she wants to sleep all the time. Yeah, it's an habit. As long as the eyes is not red or having discharge, no need to worry. So what you need to do, wear, keep the fingernails short, wear like mittens for them so that they don't poke their eyes because they can cause bleeding. So that's what you need to do. But if there's redness or discharge, there may be something that you need to see a doctor. Your baby is almost one year, no year working, no worries. If your baby is not working by 18 months, then come and see a pediatrician. Um, number two, my baby of four months does not like to suck too much during the day except midnight. I don't know what you mean by suck too much. So you really need to be very specific. So as long as your baby is sucking and gaining weight, I'm not worried. Watch our breastfeeding videos. So maybe that will be helpful. Baby has cough, but she does not cough at all times. She coughs one or two times a day. That's normal. Everybody coughs one or two times a day. It's, it's, a, it's a normal thing to cough. The cough is clearing your throat. It is when you are coughing persistently that we all start counting that that is when you are coughing too much, and that is when we want to worry, oh, is there something else going on? So I hope that's helpful. I just want to quickly clear all this question so that we can go. I'm sorry, I'm ru rushing. My daughter with... Oh, Autism vomits frequently, no fever, da, 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 and she'll vomit. I think you should see a pediatrician first to know why the child is vomiting. Yeah, don't just assume there's nothing wrong. Please see a doctor. Can I give my baby a five months so you have been milk? No. Five months old, breast milk only. Breast milk only for the first six months. It is after six months you can now start complementary feeding. If you want to, if you don't want to do exclusive breastfeeding, give an age-appropriate formula, not soya bean milk, please. Age-appropriate formula. Uh, how can I add egg when making pap for my baby? Okay, this is actually not a pediatrician question. This is <laughs> cooking question, but it's fine. Just break the egg into the pap and mix it and cook it. There's no problem, but don't give raw egg to the baby. In other words, don't make the pap and now break egg into it. Some people do that. It's wrong. Don't give raw egg. They can have what we call salmonella infection. That same infection that gives typhoid. So don't do that. So it must be cooked egg, but you can break it into the pap, whisk it together, and then cook your pap on fire. Cook it on fire so it will cook very well. Uh -huh. All right, uh, 18 months yet to produce teeth. Don't worry, when baby is ready, we will produce the teeth. All right, finally, doctor is almost a year, but not yet working. I think we've answered this question already uh, because she has a hole in her, her heart. At what age can the surgery be done? So, your baby has a hole in the heart. I believe you've seen a 
cardiologist, the cardiologist should have told you when they want to do the surgery. So follow what the cardiologist said because you didn't tell me which of the O's. So it varies. But the earlier, the better. That's the best. So. Can breastfeeding be stopped at two years? Why not? You can stop it at two years. You can do more than two years if you like, but that's fine. Uh, baby is three months, weight is point five, drooling. It wants to grow seeds. What relief do you need to give? You don't need to give any relief. You don't need, you can, but if your baby is, you, you can give uh, titters, you know, this, if baby is biting on things, you can give all these soft toys that babies can bite on. You can put it in the fridge, it cools. You can just put it on the gum. It has to cool the gums, but you don't need to really worry because all you see is drooling. There's really no need to do anything about that one. You don't need, maybe it's not in pain, so you don't need to give any relief. Okay. So maybe with colic, you can use Infocor, but most of them will resolve by their own. All right, I guess I managed. <laughs> oh no, he says one more. Um, six months old reacts to formula. Uh, I gave Ida a loan or a cereal. So stop, if your baby is reacting to formula, stop the formula. Why not give the breast milk? You don't need to give any formula at six months. It's not compulsory. Like I said, use the breast milk. Breast milk is still okay. You can express your breast milk and put it in your pub. It's fine. You don't need to give formula at all. So instead of your baby reacting, as long as your baby you didn't react to your own breast milk, just give keep giving your breast milk. Baby your five months not yet sitting, it's not a problem. Your baby should start sitting with support from five to six months, then sitting without support at eight months. But if your baby is not yet sitting by nine months, then please see us. That's when we worry about it. Okay, uh, baby fats a lot when feeding is fine. That that is normal. There's no need to worry. I don't need to eat anything. I don't know why mothers worry a lot about everything. You want to eat fatty, you want to eat walking, you want to eat titty, you want to... come on, let the baby grow, let the baby do things. You must also, you don't always have to be too overprotective of your children. Anyway, I know it's normal for you to be protective. Can you can I put honey and eat? Are you the one eating the onion or the baby? Because I'm, I'm confused, Margaret. So if it is you eating the onion, yeah. Right? Okay, it's but, confusing but, question. Yeah, yeah. But if it is you eating the onion, I'm okay with it. But because we don't want your baby to even be exposed to onion at all, I would just say, as a breastfeeding mother, you just don't deal with anything onion, onion at all. All right. Yes, I finished your Facebook people. So let me just finish Instagram. Finally, Finally. yeah. Yes, we are going now. Um. Very recent, my baby is 23 months and weigh and weighs nine kilos. Wow, best of us 2.6 kilos. Yeah, your baby is a little bit just a little bit on that way. I would have loved your baby to weigh like 12 kilos, but um, yeah, maybe you should, yeah, that's on the way. You should you may want to say, doctor, just give more food, compliment, make sure the baby is eating good, balanced diet, or see a dietitian for advice as well. Uh, I guess that's. I hope I don't left anybody's question. We'll be happy. <laughs> the baby is four years old. It's chubby as body odor. Hmm, body odor. Why would a four year old as body odor? It's not. Anyway, wash the baby very well. Good hygiene and all that. If the baby is really having body odor, you may want to see a pediatrician. Because so, some body odor may be a sign of an, a medical condition. Because four year old is very young. Yeah, to have that. Uh, Chummy, say my, I'm a nursing mom. If you don't feel well for a week, will the quantity of breast milk remain the same? Okay, these people ask me this question all the time. So initially, your baby will keep, your breast milk will not reduce, but the body will keep on taking from you. But after a while, it will affect you because if you are not eating well, then it will affect you. Eventually, your, 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 you may be weak and you may not be able to breastfeed well. And eventually, your baby's, your breast milk production will go down. So please eat well. If you are sick, please see a doctor and get treated. Uh, is soya bean powder good for consumption? Yes, there's something wrong with soya bean. Uh, make sure it is well prepared though. Um, my baby is five years, a year, five months, and weigh 15 kilos. Wow, that's that's big. Your baby is already 15 kilos is the weight of a, like a, like a three year old or three and a half year old. So watch it. Make sure you actually, you may actually want to see a doctor. Make sure there's no medical condition that is making your baby to be overweight. Okay. Somebody said, how do I consult our organization? Send us a DM. We will tell you how to contact us. Uh, yes. You want a private consultation from your baby? Yes. We do private consultation. Um, 
on video, if you're in Lagos, we do it face to face. So just send us a DM, we'll give you all the details of that. All right. Uh about Shami King, I think you need to watch our breastfeeding videos and uh, to know more. For a mother, just eat well, rest well, your breast milk will flow, and your baby needs to suck to keep your breast milk flowing. So if you are not your baby's not sucking well, and don't take any drugs. Don't take anything that can pass through your breast milk to your baby. So those are the basic things I would like to say. All right, we've gone. Oh my goodness, we've gone 40 minutes over time. All right, thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, yes. Okay, so thank you so much for joining me today uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, everywhere. If you see have more questions, please go to our Facebook group. This program has been brought to you by Axe. The Pediatricians Foundation, which is the owner of Ask the Pediatricians Facebook group on Facebook. You can't miss our Facebook group. It's the most, um, how do I put it now? <laughs> it's, it's a very big group on Facebook. So for parents, so you can put your question there from Mondays to Saturdays, 24 hours we are there. We also have our ATP family Facebook group for adults health issues, not children health issues. And then we also have our um, ATP is still a mom group. If you've lost a child or pregnancy and you want some psychosocial or psychological support, we are able to provide some support for you as well. So you can join any of our Facebook group. You can post your questions there. You can post it anonymously as well. Uh, we are working on getting our anonymous anonymous option back on Facebook. I, I was still with Facebook team today. They are working so hard. I don't know why our group was really one of those that was affected, but they are working so hard to get us back to having our anonymous uh, option. So, but please feel free to support us as well. If you want to support us, you can get this on our Facebook page everywhere. All right. Thank you, Angela, for, for, for joining me and for supporting me today. Angela, are you still with me? It feels like you're, you're on mute. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you All to everyone right. who joined us. Yes, I'm Bye. here. Oh, okay. uh, thank you, Dr. Bimi. Thank you for to everyone who joined us tonight. Um, and so we'll see you guys same time next week on Tuesday on Mondays. But you can always join our Facebook group for other group discussions and other events. Thank you and bye, bye, bye.